Going Static in a Dynamic World with Hasura and Nux.js. Hi everyone, my name is Debbie O'Brien. I'm Head of Learning and Developer Advocate at Nux.js. I'm a writer at Ultimate Courses, a teacher at View School, an organizer at Mallorca JS and View Spain. I'm a Google Developer Expert, a Media Developer Expert, and a Microsoft Most Valuable Professional. And you can follow me on LinkedIn, Debbie O'Brien, and on Twitter, devs underscore O'Brien. So Nuxt, what is Nuxt? Nuxt is the Intuitive View Framework. So basically you're writing your view code, um, but you're using Nuxt instead. What are the benefits of Nuxt? So basically with Nuxt, you have file-based routing. That basically means that you just have to create a view file and put it in a pages folder, and then you automatically get routing. You don't have to like have a router, routing JS file. You don't have to maintain that. You automatically get routing based on the files you put in the pages folder. That's kind of really cool. You also get automatic code splitting of those routes. So you don't have to add the code splitting, which means basically those routes are code splitted for you and you're only gonna get shipping into the browser, the actual page that you need. And obviously there's free like prefetching. So prefetching comes in by default. So basically Nux uh, checks out what pages it's gonna need, what pages are in your menu, for example, and starts prefetching them so they are ready for you. And there's like more than 50 modules. There's so many modules you can use with Nux, such as sitemaps, PWAs, et cetera. But today I'm gonna to talk about the static module. So why static? Well, going static, it's basically cheaper and safer because we have no server. All your code is basically a CDN, so you don't have to like pay for any servers anymore. And of course, then it's safer. And you have better offline support as well. Much better performance, because remember, everything's coming from the CDN instead of coming from a server. And it reduces the carbon footprint. And we've seen how much of an impact the last couple of months have been during lockdown. Like reducing the carbon footprint is really important. So going static is going to help in that as well. So that's kind of really cool. So the Nook static module is about to be released. It's coming out any day now. And basically um, what it does is you don't have to expose your API to the public, for example. So normally in your network tab, you would see your API call and you're not going to see that anymore. That's kind of like hidden, right? It's kind of cool. So you don't have to expose that anymore. You can decide when to publish new content from your API by regenerating your website. So you can work in your API, you can add new uh, content, et cetera, and you can decide when to publish that just by regenerating your website. Fully static is much faster because like API calls have latency. It always takes a little bit longer and going fully static is much, much faster because basically like the payload files are cached. So the payload files are your API calls. They're now cached, which means offline support is impressive, especially with a PWA module. So full static, uh, what you're gonna do to get full static, you put target static, and then you will use the commands nux build and, and nux export in order to use it. To use it. Most of you, you may be familiar with mode universal and um, nux generate. So that this is basically the new way of writing the nux generate. So I'm gonna just show you how that works. So basically you have your code, it's in GitHub, for example, and you're just like coding away and you press like, you know, git push, for example. And I've set up my deploy on Netlify. So I'm using Netlify here. You could use any other static hosting service. And it's basically going to deploy your website as soon as you have pressed um, git push. And this basically then calls your Nux build and your Nux export. And Nux then basically generates all those static HTML files, JavaScript, CSS. And now we've got our new page as a static site and it's in the browser. Simple as that, really cool, right? So what happens when we have a lot of data, okay? When we have a lot of data, for example, I've got a page with a conferences and I have all my conference talks in here. I speak at quite a lot of conferences, so I'm constantly adding in new data. So I wanna be like, I wanna use something simple. I wanna use something easy. I wanna find a way of adding data in a really easy way. I'm, I'm not a backend developer, I'm a front end developer. So what can I use? Well, Hasura, of course, we're at a Hasura conference, aren't we? So yeah, Hasura is fantastic because like, you get great real-time API instantly. Um, you don't have to understand how to build an API and you can basically build an API. So that's kind of really cool. So I'm using Hasura and I'm gonna show you how to put Hasura into Nuxt, which is also again, really easy. So I'm using the HTTP module. You could use Apollo, but that's like a lot heavier. So I'm using a lighter version. I'm just using the HTTP module and I'm gonna show you how. First you install and register it. So NPM install Nuxt HTTP, and then you, in your Nuxt config, you register the module. So then you can use it across your application. So I'm gonna create a plugin to do this. So I'm gonna create a plugin called Hasura.js, for example. And in here, I'm basically exporting a function. Now I'm using the HTTP that I installed uh, through the context on the end, through the con context. And then I'm using the inject method. So I basically have a variable called Hasura and I'm basically creating it with the 
API Hasura URL. So I'm putting that in an env file or in my Nux config env variable. Uh, you could just like paste this right in here if you did if you didn't want to put it in an env variable. And that's basically the API that you've got from Hasura. So you put that in there, and then I'm injecting Hasura, and I'm basically using dollar post and bind to create that new function. So now I can use Hasura every time in my application in order to basically get my API. So all I need to do now is register the plugin. So in my plugins um, uh, key in my Nux config, add plugins and hasura.js, because that's the, what I called it. And then I'm going to, in my workshops page, in my conferences page, I'm going to import the GraphQL, import print from the GraphQL language printer. So import this into any page you want to use it on. And then you add your query. So here is my cons query, and I'm using the GraphQL tag. And I basically add my query. So remember, this query is what you're going to get from the Hasura console. So in your Hasura, when you're basically um, in the GraphQL, you, you get this query, right? And you copy that query and put it into your code. It's as simple as that. So once that's in there, I then use async data. So using async data, I pass an app to the context. And then basically, I'm awaiting app, and I'm using here my dollar Hasura. So if you remember in our plugin, we called it Hasura. It gets prefixed with a dollar. So it's now dollar Hasura. It's available to us. And just by using that, I'm now calling my API. I've got my API call from using dollar Hasura. Um, query, I'm printing the query. And then basically, I'm returning the conferences. In this case, I'm returning the conferences page. If I was returning the workshops table, then I would return workshops and data.workshops, for example. So then in my template, I just use it just as I would use any other way, any other view. Um, conference and conferences, conference.name. Okay, pretty simple. So let me just show you how that works. So again, we have our application. We've done our Git push. It's deployed. It's on Netlify. Nux is called Nux build and Nux export. And now I'm fetching the API. I'm going to Hasura. I'm fetching from the API and Hasura is returning that data back into my Nux application. So now I've got all the data I need. I've got everything. And Nux can now generate those static files, the static HTML with all my data from Hasura, and I've got this now onto my page and into the browser. So that's kind of pretty cool, right? But you know what happens when my data changes? Because you know I'm speaking a lot of conferences, as I said, so data is changing all the time. So now what happens? Well, with Hasura, you can generate on update. So you can create a event trigger. So it's really easy. You go to the events tab, and you basically create a new event trigger. So it looks something like this. You put in your trigger name. So it could be like update workshops, for example, update conferences or whatever you're going to do. And you choose the table. So the conference table or the workshops table. And then what do you want? Insert, update, delete, et cetera. And then you basically add in the webhook URL. So the URL that you're going to add in here is what you're going to get from Netlify. Again, I'm using Netlify. You could be using another provider. And basically, if you're using Netlify, you go into Netlify build hooks. You create a new hook. So let's call it. Um, Hasura update table or something, and use your master branch and press save. That will then give you a URL. So you'll get something like this. And then basically, we add that URL to Hasura. So pretty much just paste it in here into the webhook URL. And there we go. That's all set up, which means now all I've got to do if I browse, modify, or delete anything in the table, it's now going to call that trigger. So just to show you what that looks like. So here is my Hasura. Um, I'm in here now. I'm adding my new data. So my awesome new title, for example. I'm pressing save. And once I press save in this um, in Hasura, it's going to then call that event trigger. It's going to call that deploy to Netlify. Netlify is then going to go, oh, I need to like generate the application again. So it's going to call Nux build. It's going to call Nux export. It's going to fetch the API data. I've got new data now from Hasura because I've saved that into my table. It's going to return that data into the Nuxt, and Nuxt is then basically going to generate those static HTML files. And now I'm going to have my awesome new title coming from my Hasura event trigger. So that's kind of pretty cool, right? So that's basically as simple as it is. And that's all you need to do to work with static sites and get your data changed just by the click of a button. So the Nuxt static module, call the API and page change? No, we call the payload on every page change. Let me just show you. So in here, basically, we're on an inner application. And once we go to another page, we do not call the API. We call the static folder, and that has a payload JSON of every single page that the data has come from. So it would be, say, the conference or the workshop page. And all this basically comes that comes to us from the payload folder. So we never have to call the API except for on build, like we showed you. So why static sites? Well, basically, you know, server, cheaper and safer, better offline support, better performance, reduces the carbon footprint. So think static.
and be dynamic. Are you next? Thank you very much.